Good evening. We are saddened to let you know that our friend and colleague, Paul Rosenberg, died last Tuesday, May 26th, after a long battle with cancer. Paul served as the treasurer of JFS for many years, starting in 1989, and he laid the foundation for the fiscal management and stability, which we all recognize today. He was not only a very important board member, but also a wonderful person and lifelong Red Sox fan. Marsha, his wife of almost 66 years, is herself a past JFS president. They were partners in their commitment to this organization and its mission, as well as others, such as the Danforth Museum and To Life, formerly Jewish Community Housing for the Elderly. We shall miss him very much and will honor Paul much more formally at a later time. May, May his memory be for a blessing. blessing. Thank you, Alan and Judy, for your touchy memories of Paul. We will all miss Paul very much. And as he would say, steam on, all engines ahead flanked, and so we will. Now it's my pleasure to introduce our board president, David Milo. Good evening and welcome to our 2020 JFS annual meeting. I am David Milo, the current JFS board president, but very soon to be the immediate past president. I like the way that sounds. I hear immediate <clears throat> past presidents get a special parking spot and many, many other special bennies. It has been an absolute pleasure and adventure being the JFS board president for the last three years, working with some of the most compassionate and focused JFS staff, volunteers, supporters, donors, and board members has really made me understand what the meaning of Tikkun Olam is all about. It is not just a word or concept. Repairing the world and our communities is a call to action. And boy, have I seen what action looks like at JFS. Always fighting way above our weight, we confront injustice with a laser focus in helping the most vulnerable and especially families with young children. To serve over 5,000 a year of these vulnerable in Metro West, we cannot achieve success by ourselves. We need those volunteers, supporters, donors, board members, and our partners to really step forward with us and fight the good fight. I have especially seen how fast we're able to respond during the COVID-19 pandemic. We have so many great partners. I want to especially thank CJP, not only for their, uh, not only for, of course, their great fundraising on our behalf, but their trust in our leadership to carry out our very important mutual mission. I have to tell you, that I did feel an immense responsibility during my tenure as I was part of a major succession transition for JFS. I am beyond happy that our process was one that is to be admired and shared on what the right way of planning and executing a succession plan would look like. Finding the next leader of an organization after two decades of Mark Jacobs' superb leadership would be in concept not an easy task. But as you know, our search took us in-house with Lino Covarrubias, being CEO, being confirmed by the board as a new CEO. Lino has insisted in taking over January 1, 2020. He did have an option to start July 1, given the COVID-19 crisis. Not sure who was happiest about that, whether that was Mark or Lino. Actually, it is both. Lino has thrived during this crisis and has given Mark time to reflect on what his amazing career at JFS. I will conclude with the following message. I will ask all those volunteers, supporters, and donors, board members and partners I mentioned, support Lino, his team, and the upcoming president, Joe Volman. It is impossible to achieve success without you being part of the JFS family. And Joe, I will give you this advice. Don't be afraid to rattle the cage when you think the rate of repair in our community is not fast enough. And know that I'm only a phone call away if you need help. You can find me that special parking spot also. Thank you for this gift of allowing me to lead the board for this most impactful community, based not, pro not for profit, and I will have the pleasure of serving. Thank you and God bless. Hi, my name is Sari Rapkin and I am a proud VP on the JFS board. 
On behalf of the board, I want to thank you, David, for your last three years of service. As you mentioned, it was a very critical time in the life of JFS, and you did an absolutely wonderful job leading us through succession planning, search options, and then finally a successful transition of JFS leadership. I've been in your shoes before, and I know the sleepless nights and pressure one can feel during times of important and vital transition in an organization. As Mark Jacobs put it so well on one of his reflections, David, you've been the glue, the gentle guiding hand to many board members who have tried to figure out their own roles within the board, given the all so important balance between jobs, family, and volunteerism. You have taught us all what it means to lead, inspire, and motivate action. It is action that has successfully guided us these last three years under your steady hand. On a personal note, I've really enjoyed working with you and getting to know you. Thank you, David, and I look forward to working with you in your new role as immediate past president. And now we have a little tribute for you as a parting gift. Enjoy. David, I want to thank you for all of your years of service to JFS on the board, and in particular, your last three years as board president. Your guiding and steady hand, your confidence, and your approach to solving problems is really amazing. In particular, the way you've handled yourself during this crisis. I want to thank you for all of that good work, and you've created some very big shoes to fill. I hope I can make you proud, and uh, thank you for sharing your scotch. Hi, David. Thank you for serving as board president for the last three years. You worked hard to support Mark and Lino and guided the board so that we could do the same. I appreciate all the time you took to get to know all the board members. Thank you for making a difference for JFS. David, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, your leadership uh, and your steady hand have really been impressive. I just have to tell you, you would have been an amazing Navy captain in our United States Navy. And I salute you, Captain David Milo. Thank you for your leadership. And I look forward to continue to serve with you as, in your role as immediate past president. Thanks again. Hi, David. Just wanted to say a quick thank you for all of your support and guidance as JFS board president over the past three years. Um, I really admire your commitment to helping those in our community who are less fortunate and would otherwise be left behind. And you are leaving us with big shoes to fill. Um, so thanks again, and I hope you enjoy your retirement. Bye. Dear David, I just want to take a minute to say thank you for everything you have done for JFS during these last three years. I particularly enjoyed getting to know you and working with you in the Board Excellence um, Committee and enjoyed the meetings at your office. And you're always smiling and offering us if we wanted to scotch. Uh, one of these days, I'll take you on in that offer. In the meantime, thanks again for everything. David, thank you for your incredible leadership the past three years and for sticking it out an extra year to make sure that our transition was as perfect and smooth sailing as it is with the Lieutenant Commander. We are incredibly grateful for you. Hey David, you're a definition of a true leader. You're always calm, always listening, and always thoughtful. We thank you for guiding us during the last three years, and I can't wait to go out for dinner with you. Hey, David. Thank you, my friend. Exceptional leadership in the transition. Exceptional leadership as the president of the board. Exceptional leadership as a friend and as a person. Thank you so much for all you've done for me personally, as well as for JFS. We are in a definitely a better position because of you and your dedication. Thank you much. We all appreciate it. Jewish Family Service of Metro West owes you a great deal of respect for transitioning from Mark to Lino and keeping us on a path that honored our mission. Thank you again. It's a pleasure to have been the media past president with you. Hi, David. Thank you so much for your thoughtful, intentional, and compassionate leadership. With gratitude. Hey, Dave. Thank you very much for serving the extra 
extra long presidential term and shepherding JFS through this transition. You did a great job and we love you for it. Thanks again. Hi, David. I'd like to offer both a huge thank you and a congratulations for successfully finishing your three year assignment as the board president and for leading us through a period of transition from Mark to Lino. Uh, you did it with grace, you did it with prudence, and uh, you did it with a lot of good counsel for all of us. So thank you for all you've done for JFS and for the Metro West community. Uh, we uh, were very proud of you, and I personally uh, have enjoyed the opportunity uh, to follow your leadership. Cheers to you, and thanks again for all you've done. Take care. Hi, my name is Gail Nuzzi Milo, and my husband, David Milo, has been president of the board of directors of JFS of Metro West for the last three years. David is a natural born leader and enjoys sharing his many talents with others. David is proud of a successful CEO transition, which has taken place lately, as well as many other accomplishments, which he credits to a strong dynamic board and great staff and senior staff. David has always been an inspiration to me and our two daughters. We are extremely proud and want to congratulate him on another job well done. Dad, thank you for everything you do for us and your JFS family. We truly appreciate it. We love you and we're inspired by you. Congratulations. Hi, I'm Adrian Milo. I want to congratulate my dad on his successful three years of president at the board of JFS. You've been a huge inspiration and a great role model. Thanks, Dad. Hi, David. I want to share my appreciation and gratitude to you for three exemplary years as JFS board president. Your devoted leadership of the agency has benefited its senior management team, employees, board members, and most importantly, the communities and the families we serve. You've led JFS through two of the most significant transitions in its history accepting a third year of leadership to guide us through our successful CEO transition and helping us navigate through the beginnings of our response to the pandemic. Personally, you've been a good friend and mentor to me, and I am grateful for your encouragement to become more active with the executive board as well as the governance and nominating committee. I'm appreciative for all you have done and will continue to do for JFS. And I look forward to seeing you as soon as we can at the pickle jar. Congratulations on concluding your highly successful term as JFS board president. Thank you, David, for the three years that you put in being a very, very good board president and taking us through some very difficult times. I agree completely. I've had a chance to work with you pretty intensively and we've seen your steady, firm guidance of the board through some really hard challenges, and congratulations. Thank you very Thank much. You. Good evening. It's my pleasure and honor to introduce tonight's speaker, but before introducing him, I'd like to first say thank you to Chester and Diane Black for establishing and funding this lecture series. The Chester and Diane Black Lecture Series on Volunteerism and Civic Engagement is extremely important to JFS. The example that they have set and the life they have led is an example for all of us. And the speakers that are part of this series really truly reflect on what their goal was. So now to our speaker, Jeff Summit. I've had the privilege and honor of knowing Jeff for over 40 years now. Going back to my time as a tough student, when Jeff was then the Tufts rabbi and chaplain, where he spent 39 years in that role, only recently retiring from that role, but he's still um, a professor of music at Tufts. In addition, Jeff is also the um, director of Hebrew College's Innovation Lab and is a senior consultant for Hillel International and is a research professor in the Department of Music at Tufts. So without further ado, my friend, one of the greatest speakers I know, I miss hearing his sermons at the High Holidays at Tufts LL, Jeff Summit. Thank you so much, Joe. Here's how I'd like to begin my remarks. 
Abraham Joshua Heschel taught that our spiritual tradition, quote, begins with a consciousness that something is asked of us. But what is asked of us now at this moment? As we navigate family, work, volunteer commitments, friendships, and Jewish celebrations from a distance. What's asked of us in a world where Zoom has replaced face-to-face -face meetings? And I would much rather be there with you in person than to be giving this talk over Zoom. What's asked of us as we live deep in a place of fear and for some already the reality of illness and loss? What's asked of us as we lead amazing organizations like JFS, where the need is now greater than ever, where resources are challenged and we are morally bound to do more at exactly the time when our energy, our hope and our courage are increasingly challenged. I'm deeply honored to deliver the Chester and Diane Black Lecture on volunteerism and community engagement for JFS this year. For almost 40 years, I was the rabbi and executive director of Hillel at Tufts. And not only did Chester and Diane have a special connection to Tufts, but again and again, their community leadership was inspiring. And I was privileged to work with JFS during my time at Tufts whether addressing issues of homelessness, compassionately working with friends who long to adopt a child, or working with Mark on an amazing project to welcome Syrian refugees. The work of JFS, the quality of the staff, the authentic, authentic commitment to live out Jewish values has made JFS a model organization in our community. I've long admired Mark and loved when I read that UB Jones called Mark a long distance runner for social justice. It's really true. And I know it was hard to fill Mark's shoes, but the organization did just a stellar job in hiring Lino. And Lino and his entire staff at JFS exemplify what the Jewish tradition teaches when we're called to see every human being is created in the image of the Holy One. People who approach their work with courage and instill hope in the lives of so many. So over my years at Tufts, I learned how precious, excellent lay leadership is for an organization. And I send a special shout out for the wonderful and exemplary leadership of Dave Milo as he steps down as chair. And it's my friend Joe Volman, and Joe and I have known each other for many years, um, comes into leadership at Chair, and Joe was a board member at Tufts Hillel. I know that Joe will bring his vision, his deep intelligence, and his commitment to JFS, and you will be positioned to move from strength to strength. So returning to this question of what is asked of us now, I want to share some perspectives that have emerged from the Innovation Lab I've been privileged to direct at Hebrew College this year. In this lab, rabbinic students and recently ordained rabbis developed a range of creative, educational, spiritual, social justice, and interfaith projects in the greater Boston community. And many of the issues that we've been discussing on thought leadership, creative innovation, courage, and hope speak to the challenges that leaders and organizations face now is we do our best to live with integrity, purpose, and compassion at this extraordinary time. So first, thought leadership. At its core, thought leadership begins by asking questions. As you look around you, what emerging issues are simply being missed by our institutions, organizations, and current leadership? What are the greatest needs? What's being ignored? What work needs to be done? And how do you understand your life and your action in relation to that work? On a deeper level, when we engage in thought leadership, we ask about the work behind the work. 
What frame do we use to understand what we're actually doing in our lives at this moment? The poet Marge Piercy writes about beautiful vases that are now put in museums and she muses that while they're in museums, they were created to be used. And she writes, quote, the pitcher cries for water to carry and a person for work that is real. And I think what could possibly be more real now than standing up to support those who have been left behind, the elderly, the homeless, human beings who are hungry, refugees in need of a job and a home. I also love the work of the poet Mary Oliver, and Mary Oliver writes, my work is loving the world. And I so wish that more leaders, more organizations framed their work that way now. The Jewish tradition teaches that love isn't an abstract feeling. Love is caring made real through action, making sure that human beings have a roof over their heads food to eat, safety, and security. What could be more in line than the work that JFS is doing now? At a time when our country and our world is so polarized, so divided into us and them, we could model our tradition's value of valuing all human beings. A tradition that teaches that even when we disagree, the human being you're interacting with is precious and holy. It's neither an exaggeration nor self-aggrandizing to say that the stance of each one of us, when we project our work, the attitudes we radiate, both in our organizational commitments and in our personal lives, are shaping the future every day of our children, our friends, our families, and communities. So let me take a deeper look at two concepts, courage, and hope in order to see how those concepts could shape our lives now. Courage and the everyday necessities of being alive. Entering the current reality is like traveling to a new country. It's unknown and unexplored. But this is not the first time that we as a people have been in a really challenging, difficult situation. In the 1940s, writing as the Nazis were ascendant in power in Europe, the French writer Anis Nin said, quote, we lose some of our faith under the oppression of mad leaders, insane history, pathologic cruelties of daily life. And still, Nin asserts, the importance of remembering to live, in her words, with curiosity and exploration. She wrote, I am by nature always beginning and believing. I like to live always at the beginning of life, not at its end. So in its essence, thought leadership is living at the beginnings, being proactive, believing in and asserting our own agency. Addressing these challenges is not for the faint of heart. These are scary times, and we need to ask, what does courage look like in our lives now? I believe that increasingly raising courageous voice is the work of regular people doing their work really well, living their lives with grace and generosity, modeling new visions of community and connection. The poet David White writes, courage it was, is what love looks like when tested by the simple everyday necessities of being alive. I think courage also means being present when it really counts. I want to share a story that I learned from Rabbi Larry Kushner. He calls it the stranger on the bus. And this is a true story, and it happened in Munich, in Nazi Germany. Here's the story. A woman had been riding a city bus home from work 
when SS stormtroopers suddenly stopped the coach and began examining the identity papers of the passengers. Most were annoyed, but a few were terrified. Jews were being told to leave the bus and get in a truck around the corner. The woman watched from her seat in the rear as the soldiers systematically worked their way down the aisle, and she began to tremble, tears streaming down her face. When the man next to her noticed she was crying, he politely asked her why. I, I don't have the papers you have. I'm a Jew. They're going to take me away. The man exploded in disgust. He began to curse and scream at her. You stupid cow, he roared. I can't stand being near you. The SS men asked what all the yelling was about. Damn her, the man shouted angrily. My wife has forgotten her papers again. I'm so fed up. She always does this. The soldiers laughed and moved on. Now that was a moment of extraordinary courage to step up and be fully present when it mattered most. And of course, that's an extraordinary story from an extraordinary time. But I believe that if we attune ourselves to the world around us, each of us has opportunities when we could step up and seriously make a difference in people's lives, when we could do transformative work, and when people are desperate, hungry, lost, without resources or work, our actions can literally save their lives. And there's another form of courage so important now. It takes courage to remain hopeful when so much is blurry and unsure. I want to talk about how I like my hope, which is hope with a side order of reality. Some of us have mantras phrases that keep running through our mind in times of challenge and difficulty. I realize that one of mine is from Hatikva, the Israeli national anthem. Odlo avda tikva tenu, Hatikva bat shanot al payan. We have not lost our hope, the hope that's persisted for thousands of years. I think living well through this situation is being able to convey to the people around us, even in our fear and uncertainty, that there will be a time when it will be better, when we will clasp hands, hug one another, feel safe again, be secure, celebrate in actual community, and play and work. At the same time, because I'm Jewish, I like my hope served with a side order of reality. So I'm drawn to the work of the writer and activist Rebecca Solnit, who says, quote, It's important to say what hope is not, because it's not the belief that everything was, is, or will be just fine. She says, The hope I'm interested in locates itself in the premise that we don't know what will happen, and in the spaciousness of uncertainty, we have room to act. You recognize that you might be able to influence the outcomes. You alone or in concert with a few dozen or several million others. At its core, I believe that the work that JFS does is about the power to act. We didn't choose to be in this difficult time, but we can choose how we will manage the experience, choose what we will do, what we will model and teach as we go through these difficulties. In conclusion, I'd say that while I'm not in a silver linings frame of mind, it's true that for many people, the experience of living through and leading in crisis is the refiner's fire that shapes our life and our work going forward. There will be a time when this is over, and I want to be able to look back and say that I comported myself well, that I found ways to be value added to the lives of the people whom I love and the people who came to know me during this crisis. I want to be able to say that I lived with courage 
and I held out the hope that we would use the lessons we learned to think deeply and bring more love, compassion, and hope into our many worlds. Thank you so much. I'm really honored that I was invited to be with you. Thank you, Rabbi Summit, for your inspiring remarks. Each of us at Jeff Fest will carry your words with us as we continue to meet the challenges ahead. The next section of our annual meeting is one of my favorites. We recognize some of our staff and volunteers for an exceptional job well done. Rabbi, you spoke tonight about action and courage. We at Jeff Fest combine action with courage because we understand that repairing the world happens with one child, one family, one neighborhood, one school at a time. Our awardees tonight certainly showed courage during this very dangerous pandemic. Since 2008, when I retired from the Navy and began working at JFS, I quickly appreciated that without an active, committed, and trained force of volunteers, we could not function as an organization. I strongly believe in the power of community action and volunteerism. Over the past decade, we have transitioned our volunteer force to one trained with specific skills that align with our impact areas. As many as you, of you know, Jeff Fest and our volunteers can quickly mobilize as we did three years ago with the Syrian humanitarian effort. And by the way, our Syrian families continue to flourish in our community and have assimilated beautifully into American culture. While responding to the call for action, you probably saw last week's Boston Globe article about one of our Syrian families giving back to members of Temple Beth Elohim, the temple that assisted them with their resettlement. Uh, and they're helping by sewing masks for them and training congregants to make masks for others in need. This is truly a definition of kindness coming full circle. We are now expanding this initial effort to other synagogues and faith groups with our, with our partner, the Shapiro Foundation. Now on to the awards. The CEO's Roll-Ups the Sleeves Award. This award traditionally recognizes volunteers that have gone beyond the call of duty. This year, them in hearing, JFS pleads for assistance with our COVID-19 response, either by delivering meals to isolated older adults in our Jewish and broader community during the pandemic, or by providing assistance to our, our distribution of food and personal care items to our local immigrant community. During this very stressful time, these volunteers made the choice to venture out and help. You truly personify our tradition that Rabbi Summit spoke about, that love is not an abstract concept, but that love is caring through action. Thank you to the following super volunteers and recipients of my Roll Up the Sleeves Award. Please wave when recipients when you hear your name and please clap when you're acknowledged. Emily Bishop, Erin Condon, Audrey Epstein, Danielle Feinstein, Maurice Feinstein, Amelia Godbetter, Sarah Godbetter, David Cunin, Drew Ledgren, Josh Lutch, Shanita Malcolm, Michael Matilla, Jenna Orlinsky, Leslie Orlinsky, Vanessa Pendexter, Ann Rabinovitz, Amy Radant, and Amy Siegel. Thank you, thank you, thank you again to you 18 courageous and committed volunteers and congratulations. I also want to recognize some of our staff who went well beyond the call of duty during this pandemic. While you could easily have requested remote only work, you stepped forward because you knew you had to be in the field to help some of our most vulnerable individuals in the community. Thank you to the following staff members. Gail Gregory, our manager of volunteer services that made the food delivery operation happen. Joanne Kane, Maggie Kenny, Annie Michelson, Abriel Salloway, Manuel Sayan, and Natalie Pacino, our AmeriCorps member. Also our incre incredible home care employees, they did not have the options to, st to stay home or work remotely. Their charge is taking care of frail older adults in our community, and they are truly heroes in my eyes. Led by Damaris Medina Hernandez, our home care manager, thank you, gracias, to the fallen people who have really made a difference to our frail older adults in our community. Lidia Barrera, Olga Cordero, Margarita de Jesus, Michelle Dominguez, Josiah Wuhu, Monica Leon, Benita Martinez, Maxima Martinez, Sandra Martinez, Felicita Mejia, Kayla Maces, Elvia Morales, Maria Morales Ortiz, Freddy Obusu, Dolores Paredes, Pura Pimentel, Josefina Ramirez, Patricia Rivero, Nidia Rosario, Miriuquella Rivera, Miriam Samoya, Lucinda Tejeda, 
and Maria Vasquez. Thank you to all for everything you have done. I talk a lot in the next few minutes. I have lots of awards. It's a good thing. Next is very exciting. Um, I have the pleasure of introducing a new award by the powers vested to me by the current board president, David Milo. We have a new award to honor our retiring CEO, Emeritus Mark Jacobs. That's right, Mark. We got an award in your, in your honor. While we kicked around the idea of calling it the Jacobs, we're actually going to call it the Mark N. Jacobs Innovation Award. Notice the N as in Nancy, so that we don't have any confusion with a clothing designer. This award recognizes a staff, volunteer, donor, board member, or anyone in the community who through creative innovation has enhanced the ability of JFS to accomplish its mission. This year, selecting the recipient of this award was very easy. Once JFS made the decision that we needed to move our entire operation remotely due to COVID-19, this staff member made it possible for an organization that was not suited at all to operate remotely to do so in short order. Leveraging technology and an amazing ability to understand operation processes and how they affect staff and clients, this staff member allowed us to continue to provide services to clients during this challenging time. Because of this staff member, we did not miss a beat. I'm sure that staff have figured out who this person is. Congratulations to Wendy Kogan. You are making history as a first recipient of the Mark N. Jacobs Innovation Award. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Welcome. <laughs> Our next award is the Ellen Block Leadership Award. Ellen Block, known to many of you, was a volunteer and employee of JFS. She led, our, she led our efforts in welcoming and resettling families, many Jewish families from the former Soviet Union. Ellen was tireless in her efforts on behalf of these families who needed help starting a new life in the US. Ellen has always believed that today's youth embody the hope for the future. To that end, Ellen created JFS's first new American and Russian youth enrichment program in the early 90s. Ellen was all, has always believed that today's youth embody the hope for the future. And to that end, I'm repeating myself, created Jeff as a new American, I skipped the youth enrichment program in the early 90s. Ellen has an unfailing belief and pride in their capacity to embrace change and challenge, challenges through their unselfish giving of their time, talent, and enthusiasm. They are the leaders of tomorrow. The Ellen Block Youth Leadership Award was established to recognize the youth who have demonstrated these qualities. Now I'm going to turn over to Lucia Panicella to name the Ellen Block Youth Leadership Award recipients. Hello, I'm Lucia Panicella, Senior Director of Programs and Partnerships at JFS. I have the honor tonight of presenting the 2020 Ellen Block Youth Leadership Awards. Tonight's honorees are Abigail Van Luling and Alana Martins. Abby has been a mentor with STEAM Academy for two years now. She is a rising junior at Babson College and participates in the Community Action Program, which pairs Babson students with a variety of community-based partnerships for weekly service and engagement. Abby is a natural leader. Her optimism, kindness, and focus allow her to gain the trust and cooperation of our students in STEAM Academy. Abby has committed fully to volunteering with our students at Wilson, despite her busy college schedule. She has brought such important energy and creativity to her role as a mentor, and she possesses true initiative and compassion, which make her an incredible asset to our program. Alana began volunteering in the All-Stars Extended Day program just this past fall, and quickly became a key player for the program's success. While volunteering, Alana became very close with her group of students, all of whom spend their school days in a bilingual classroom at Woodrow Wilson. As a native Portuguese speaker, Alana worked hard to ensure that her group of students were successful, both academically and socially. She has consistently gone above and beyond as a volunteer and mentor, and it is clear that Alana cares deeply for the students in the All-Stars program. She has proven to be not only an indispensable mentor for the students, but also instrumental and committed to the program staff. We are so fortunate to have Abby and Alana, and we hope they are both able to continue volunteering with us in the future. Congratulations, Abby and Alana. Thank you, Lucia, and congratulations to, our, to the awardees. 
Our next award is what we call the Liebel Staff Award. Hollywood has the Oscars, we have the Liebel. We have a special guest tonight to present the award. Hello everyone, I'm Susan Liebold, the sort of uncomfortable namesake of the Liebold Award that I'm gonna be talking about in a minute. And just for the record, uh, Mark Jacobs insisted on calling it the Liebold Award, even though I begged him to name it almost anything else but that. But I'm happy that the award has gone on for as long as it has, and I'm actually feeling very honored uh, to have been a part of it. Uh, so I'm going to turn to read uh, the script that Lino sent me so that I get everything right, and uh, my hearty congratulations to the award winner this year. So here I go. Uh, this staff award, uh, which this year is the 2020 Liebold Award, the award was established when I departed JFS in 2008. Can you guys believe it's been that long? In my honor to recognize a staff member or members who have made continued professional growth and impact enhancing the JFS mission. And that part of the script is underlined, so that's the really important part. Uh, the recipient of this year's award can be best summarized with the following bullets, okay? So here's the criteria that is under consideration every year before the award is announced. Number one, ability to work well under pressure, problem solve in real time, and perhaps most importantly, be a calm and competent presence for both families and volunteers alike. Number two, has taken charge of programs and developed them, finding new and improved ways to deliver quality service to clients and partners. Number three, with the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic, JFS was faced once again with the need to dive into work amidst uncertainty and move quickly to assure that some of our most vulnerable clients were taken care of. This staff member has been a leader during this time, working with staff, partners, and volunteers to quickly put plans into place and effectively execute those plans. Number four, this person is a dedicated, efficient, and effective employee, driven to do the right thing and work towards positive change in the community. So any guesses who this might be? Sadly, I don't have the privilege of having met this person, but from this description, I am sure that um, they are a wonderful, wonderful, critical addition to the JFS mission. And I'm very, very proud to congratulate this year's Liebold Award winner, Danny Woodward. Congratulations. And I wish I could be there in person to shake your hand and give you a hug. Bye bye to everybody. That was really nice for Susan to, to do that. So thank you, Susan, for that. I really appreciate it. Uh, to, conclude our, to conclude our awards portion tonight, I want to take a few moments to recognize four of our staff members retiring this year. With over 90 combined years of service, you heard it right, 90. We wish Mark Jacobs a great retirement, which by the way, him and his wife, Joanne, are celebrating their 45th wedding anniversary tonight. Today is their 45th wedding anniversary. So congratulations, Mark and Joanne. Uh, many more years to come, Mazel Tov. Also retiring is Diana O'Brien, our director of, of our Family Assistance and Anti-Poverty Initiative. Risa Lifshot, bookkeeper and office manager and Ra Raquel Woodard, our adoption program's social worker. We wish you the happiest possible transition to retirement. It has been an honor for me to serve with all of you. Your commitment to JFS and passion to help those in need has fueled my own desire to always make a difference and not be afraid to take on challenges in the community. We hope to somehow celebrate this summer. There is way too much roasting material to let it pass. And to our three departing employees, Danny Woodward, our manager of immigrant services, heading out to law school at the University of Texas. Maggie Kenny, program specialist in immigrant services, heading out to Boston College to obtain her master's in social work. And finally, Annie Michelson, program specialist in every area of Jeff Pess's work, heading to the University of Vermont to obtain a nurse practitioner's degree in licensure. You've all been a pleasure to work with. Never forget the families and children's lives you have impacted while you were with us. 
It will sustain you during those late nights studying for the big exam. Now onto the business part of the meeting, and it's my pleasure to turn it over live to our president for not very long, David Milo. Thank you, Lino. In the package that Lino sent to everybody, you received the 2019 annual minutes. Uh, I presume everybody has had time to look at them. Uh, I'm looking for a, a motion to accept the meeting minutes, the annual meeting minutes of 2019. So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Would everybody like to raise their hands in favor of the annual meeting of 2019, please? Does anybody, since I have trouble seeing so many screens, is there any abstention to the or any negative votes toward the 2019 annual meeting? Hearing none, the motion carries. Uh, John, would you like to give us the treasurer's report? Absolutely, thank you very much. I'm gonna give you a, a very brief overview of the financials. It was another good year for JFS. You can see in the packet or on the screen, we had cash receipts for the full year of 2019 of $3,365,000. And we had expenditures of $3,330,000. So a net increase of $35,000. You can go through your leisure and, and see the breakdown of, of how the money came in and uh, how we spent it very wisely. And on that, I'm gonna conclude my fastest financial report ever. And I'm very uh, happy to invite back Alan and Judy Bernstein for the discharge and installation of officers. We are Al and Judy Bernstein, past presidents of JFS. It is a pleasure and honor for us to discharge and install the JFS board for 2020 to 2021, particularly with so many milestones this year, especially the retirement of Mark Jacob as CEO. We have been part of JFS since 1993 and participated in hiring Mark in 1996. It is truly a wonderful way for us to begin to end one era of success and begin another. Many thanks to all board members being discharged and those about to be installed. Great community-based nonprofits like JFS are the product of great governance over many years and such as that exhibited by our board. Thanks to all of you for your dedication to our agency. Now on to the discharges. If we were in a building, we'd ask for the doors to be guarded and locked so that the discharges would be not able to flee before they can be reinstalled. All right, someone do that virtually, please. The following officers are hereby discharged. Vice President Joseph Bowman, Vice President Sari Rapkin, Vice President Michelle Wylan, Treasurer John Herrera, and Secretary Ian Rubin. The, a special thanks to Michelle as she ends her service on the board. Thank you for your commitment to JFS, and we know that you will continue to be a volunteer at JFS in the future. And an even more special discharge to our outgoing president, David Milo. As was discussed earlier in the program, you are a president to be emulated, and we thank you for your service and continued role in the greatly coveted immediate past president position, the finest job on any board. We've been there, you will like it. Following board members, with terms expiring in 2020 are being discharged. A special thank you to the following for ending their maximum three terms, totaling nine years on the board. The importance of your service to our community is beyond words. Chester Black, Kevin Foley, Penny Glassman, and Robin Welsh. Also being discharged in 2020, but being reinstalled shortly, 
are Chase Carpenter, Ari Friesinger, and Deborah Merkin. Again, thank you for your dedicated service to JFS. For those leaving the board, you all receive a gift in the mail as a token of our appreciation and something with which to remember your service to JFS. Now on to the installation of officers, reinstallation of continuing board members, and installation of our new board members. Before we do that, we want to remind all of you of your responsibilities as officers and directors in accordance with the guidance of the Attorney General of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Here's your charge. If you are a trustee or a member of the Board of Directors of a charitable organization, you and your fellow board members are responsible for governing that organization. The law imposes upon you two primary duties, the duty of care and the duty of loyalty. The duty of care means you must act with such care as an ordinarily prudent person would employ in your position. The duty of loyalty means that you must act in good faith and in a manner that you reasonably believe is in the best interest of the organization. First, we'd now like to install the following officers for two-year terms. VP, Sari Rapkin, Treasurer, John Herrera, a new Vice President, Ian Rubin, another new Vice President, Jeff Swartz, and our new Secretary, Ashley DePaolo. And now, not least of all, our new JFS Board President, Joseph Volman. Will at least clap. Please clap. Everybody clap. <laughs> it's so exciting to see a new board president and a new CEO for JFS. That doesn't happen very much. We know both of you are very excited to be working together and to really accelerate our work of social equality for the most vulnerable in our community. Mazel tov and congratulations to you all. Next, let's reinstall board members with new terms. Reinstalled for a term expiring in 2023, Chase Carpenter and Ari Freisinger. Reinstalled for a term ending in 2021, Deborah Merkin. Welcome back. We missed you in the last few minutes. Glad you didn't run away. And now one of the most exciting parts of the evening, installing our newest board members to the class of 2023. Stephanie Elkin. Stephanie is a semi-retired food professional receiving her culinary education at a Boston-based cooking school. She has worked in the restaurant and bakery industry as a food professional personal chef and cooking teacher, and has recently been an integral part of publishing a community building cookbook with CJP's Women's Philanthropy. Stephanie is also a certified health coach and started Hand in Hand Nutrition. Stephanie is a volunteer, advocate, and friend and family to recently resettled Syrian refugees, working closely with JFS and Temple Shalom of Newton for the past three years. She has continued to work with JFS and other programs such as the All Stars After School Program at the Woodrow Wilson Elementary School in Framingham. Stephanie is married to Jay Friedman, lives in Newton, and they have two young adult children. Ilana Margolis. Ilana is a Senior Director, Government and Regulatory Affairs for Blue Cross Blue Shield of Massachusetts. Alana's earlier work was as a professional leader at JCRC and also was Chief of Staff at a, the Executive Office of Elder Affairs. Alana has long-term ties to JFS and has been a strong advocate. She brings vast knowledge and strategic insight in areas where JFS is not strong, 
Plus, she has deep Jewish communal and governmental ties. Alana lives in Sharon. Neil Ross. Neil grew up in Weston and now lives in Wayland with his wife, Stacy, and two sons. Professionally, Neil has been in the real estate business for over 28 years, exclusively representing corporate real estate users. Neil's practice consists of working with both for-profit and non-for-profit entities, helping them to align their occupancy costs with their business goals and objectives. Neil and his children have been active participants in recent JFS activities, including attending Seize the Dream and the annual Back to School Backpack event with his children. Andrew Troop. Andrew is an attorney and his practice focuses on business reorganizations and debtors and creditors rights, as well as representing nonprofit organizations. He serves on the board of the Greater Boston Legal Services. Andrew is also a trustee for Belmont Hill School, Day School, excuse me. He has a passion for helping immigrants and other underserved communities. He attended JFS's Wilson Elementary School Turkey Dinner Distribution in 19, 2019 and has been a supporter of JFS for over a decade. He lives in Sudbury with his wife who volunteers for JFS. Marissa Wainwright. Marissa is co-chair of CJP's Dewey Stone Kadima Leadership Development Program, formerly known as Young Leadership Development, YLD. She and her husband, Zach, have been connected to JFS via CJP and JFS's Anti-Poverty Initiative, attending Seize the Dream and visiting at JFS a couple of times. Marissa was named one of the CJP superstars and her role in young leadership at CJP creates the opportunity for accelerated pipeline development of emerging young leaders. Marissa grew up in Newton and now she and Zach live in Waltham. Welcome to one of the most exciting and impactful boards you will ever been part of. Probably the most exciting and impactful. We know we have been around for almost three decades with JFS, as we mentioned at the beginning. Thank you to all for your past, current, and future service to JFS. We wish you the very best. And now, back to Lino. Thank you, Alan Judy, and congratulations to all our installed officers and directors and our new president. Congratulations. I'm so excited to introduce our next speaker, Sarah Abramson. Sarah is the Senior VP of Strategy and Impact at CJP. I had the privilege of being part of the initial stages of what is now the Jewish Anti-Poverty Initiative way back during the 2008-2009 Great Recession. In the beginning, it was a small triage program with limited funds and staff with the aim of helping families through the recession. After the recession, we found that Jewish poverty is not, necessar not necessarily tied to market downfalls, but in many cases, poverty occurs because of unforeseen situations, such as a death in a family, medical, mental health situations, underemployment, having to become a caregiver to a family member, and so many other reasons. Today, thanks to our strong partnership with Combined Jewish Philanthropies, we have a program with great resources, staff, and the tools needed to assist families in need. Sarah has been a big reason of why we have such a robust Jewish entry poverty program in the Boston Jewish Federation. She has always been a champion for families in need, a helping hand, and a tireless partner in combating poverty in our community. I'm happy to call Sarah a colleague and a friend, Sarah Abramson. A hearty congratulations to JFS Metro West, to Lino, and to all of the board leadership on another amazingly successful year during a time that none of us could have ever imagined. I personally, and CJP more generally, could not be more grateful for the incredible partnership that we have built over the last many, many years. 
So much of that partnership is a credit to the connection between CJP, JFS leadership, in particular Mark Jacobs. Mark, another mazel tov on your retirement and a great, great depth of gratitude from us to you for all of your leadership over the years. There are so many other connections between CJP and JFS Metro West. I understand that Chester Black, that you are retiring from the board. Thank you for your service, your incredible service to CJP and to JFS Metro West. We are indebted to you. I would be entirely remiss if I didn't take the opportunity to personally thank Diana O'Brien. Diana, I can't believe you're retiring. You have been an incredible partner to me personally and to CJP. You have really led our anti-poverty initiative on the front lines, making sure that every single client knows that the Jewish community is here for them when they need us the most. That is the exact spirit of the entire partnership between CJP and JFS Metro West. You are on the front lines. You are the carers. You are the listeners. And more importantly, you are the change makers. You don't just help when people need it. You listen. You take note. You help people understand what they are really grappling with. And you help move them to a place where they can see a light, a light that was very, very dim, but really shines bright thanks to all of your incredible support. It's a testament to the board leadership. It's a testament to the professional leadership. And it's a testament to everyone who is so gratified to be a part of this wonderful community. Your volunteers would do anything for you. I would do anything for you. CJP remains committed to you. We are entering uncharted territories, but we feel more calm and more confident knowing that we are doing it with an organization like JFS Metro West. Thank you to all of you for another amazing year. We look forward to being in whatever comes next year together. Thank you, Lino, for inviting me to spend a few minutes with everyone tonight, and Mazel Tov. Thank you, Sarah, for your kind words. Uh, before I hand it over to our new president for his closing, I want to make a few short remarks about the immediate future. The COVID-19 pandemic has brought death and sadness to so many families. The additional long-lasting effect of the pandemic will be the financial distress and suffering it will bring to families in the coming year. I am committed, and JFS is committed, to being there to help families navigate these stormy waters. We will continue to build collaborative partnerships in the community so that together we can support more families in a coordinated effort. JFS will need the help of every board member, supporter, and community member to help us remain strong in an environment of very high need and considerable competition for philanthropic funds. If there was ever been a time for you to be involved with JFS, it is now. We need you to volunteer. We need your financial support. Please do not wait for us to ask for your help. As Rabbi Summit noted, I too like hope served with a side order of reality. And the reality has always been that our community responds and steps up to assist JFS when times are tough. I know you will be there for us and I thank you in advance. And now it is my absolute honor and pleasure to turn it over to our new board president, Joe Volman. Hi, I'm Joe Volman, your new board president. I'm thrilled and honored to accept this appointment and looking forward to working with all of you more closely over the next couple of years. I'm very excited to follow in the footsteps of someone like David Milo, who has paved the way for the future development and engagement of board leadership. Thank you, David, for turning over the keys to a well-kept and functioning board. Never before have we seen the importance of a board and committees that can act quickly and effectively than what we've seen with this COVID-19 response. I am so proud to see how our board rapidly responded to our CEO's action, recommendations, and scenario planning. This allowed JFS to stay way ahead of our responsibility to our community, while also maintaining the organizational financial health. Governance is very important to me, and as the new president, I will continue to make our board and committees more effective, all with the laser focus on helping the most vulnerable families with children and isolated older adults. Urgency matters. I will need everyone on the board to continue to promote JFS, recruit volunteers, and introduce potential donors to JFS's work. This responsibility will be even greater this coming year, given the competition for philanthropic dollars following this crisis. I also look forward to your ideas on board activities 
and other events that will make our board work more fun, engaging, and effective. To the staff of JFS, you are the best. You do all the hard work with compassion and a smile. I look forward to getting to know more of you and working more closely with more of you. Thank you. As Mark Jacobs so elegantly put in his retirement reflection, you know what the JFS secret sauce is. It combines core values, soul, heart, purpose, meaning, inclusion, and a high level of skills and competencies. I challenge each and every one of you to constantly be thinking of more innovative approaches to our social situations. We know JFS cannot accelerate impact without collaborative partnerships. It is up to all of us to continually be on the lookout and foster partnerships that align with JFS's mission. I have full confidence in the new executive team led by Lino. I know that they will push the envelope and will need the very best from each staff member. I know you'll be up to the challenge because you care about those in need. To our partners, thank you for your trust and confidence in JFS and we look forward to continuing to increase the level of collaboration. A special shout out to CJP for really stepping forward and in helping JFS build an impactful program. One of them, as you know, is the amazing Jewish Anti-Poverty Program, which as I speak, is helping desperate families with issues due to the pandemic. To our volunteers and donors, thank you, thank you, thank you. You are the lifeblood of JFS. Please reach out to us if we can do things better. You want to make an introduction or simply want to learn more about the future direction of JFS. We are always looking forward for more volunteers and donors. In closing this very exciting annual meeting, I wanna say, make a few personal remarks. My family and I have really enjoyed our involvement with JFS and I'm looking forward to this new journey as board president. It is an interesting time, an exciting time for JFS. We are so blessed to have Lino Covarrubias as our new CEO. We have tough shoes to fill with the leadership that preceded us in Mark Jacobs and David Milo, but to Lino, the staff and our board, I look forward to working with all of you to accelerate social, academic and health equity in our community. Thank you and good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good Stay night. well. Good night, Good night, everybody. Good night. Thank you so much. Stay well. Be well. Thank you for all that you do. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye. Good, Good night. Good night. Thanks, Lino. Thanks, Joe. Take care. Talk to you in the morning.